Welcome! This screencast is all about interesting and geographical ways you can investigate human features in your local area and it covers section 2 of the tick list. There are many many ideas in this screencast. You don't need to do all of them. Just pick one, two or three that look most interesting to you and do those. These are the areas that make up the human geographical features of an area. The screencast is going to look at each area in turn and give you some fun geographical ideas for investigating them. It can be tricky to know what all these words mean, so there is also more detail on the next few slides. Population is all about people, and particularly about what you can measure about people. Geographers have noticed that certain areas have certain population characteristics. For example, Calcot may have lots of young families, while Pangbourne may have lots of older couples with, with older children. Most of your population data will come from secondary sources. Often changes in population are reported in the news, so look in the Reading papers. Here are some web links and an example of an article that I have found. Local governments need population stats and ob often publish them on their websites. Look at the West Berkshire site for local statistics. Finally, Wikipedia often has a population section on different areas that it calls demography. Remember, you are looking for statistics and remember that you should comment on patterns using words like high, low, increasing and decreasing. If you are a challenge seeker, how about some of these ideas? The Office of National Statistics collects population statistics through the census. Their website is detailed and a bit complicated, but have a go. You may only find statistics for Berkshire or Reading, but that's okay. Or you could try Google. If you use search terms connected by an AND, you will get better results that are specific to our area. Here are some of the areas that geographers cover when they look at transport. Transport systems are best shown on maps. You could add all of the information here onto your map. You could use symbols and colour coding, but don't forget a key. You could add detail, like how good a service is or any problems with the service. Maybe the buses stop running at 8 o'clock at night, using annotations on your map. These websites cover all of this information for Reading and Berkshire. A challenge seeker could try to collect some primary data. You could try to do a traffic count in your local area, but you must ask your parents before you do this. This Wikipedia site gives you instructions on what to do, but basically you need to count the number of vehicles passing you when you're standing by the edge of the road in, say, two minutes. You could then find out when the road is busiest by repeating traffic count several times in one day or you could find out which days of the week are busiest by repeating the traffic count at the same time each day for a week. You could show your um, findings in a graph but, but remember to comment on it looking for patterns. These are some of the areas of housing that geographers look at. You could collect primary data using a digital camera or a camera phone. Download the pictures and annotate them. Remember to describe, to explain and to analyse. You could even ask the points of view of the house's residents. What do they like or dislike about their house or their local area? And you could include this in your annotations and labels. A challenge seeker might like to think about how sustainable the houses are, how green are they, and include this in their annotations. 
A challenge seeker could use secondary sources of information to conduct a survey about housing in their local area. These are three good sources of information on houses for sale in, in your local area. You could survey the type of housing or maybe you could survey the cost of housing. By using a tally chart each time you see a house in one of those different categories, you could find out the most usual type of house for sale in your area. You could make a graph of your results and remember to comment on them. When geographers investigate jobs or employment, they may look at things like this. You could collect primary data from people in your local area. Friends and parents... Fr Friends' parents are fine. Ask them three or four questions like these and then make a table or a graph of the results. Remember to comment on what you've found. A challenge seeker might like to look into what these four terms mean. Primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. And they may like to categorise the jobs into these four categories. This is, a, look, this is looking at a geographical model and is top level geography. A challenge seeker may Google articles on unemployment in Reading and Berkshire. But remember to check the date of the article very carefully to make sure it's up to date. You could also look at big local employers in your area and you could ask questions such as what sort of jobs do they have there, why are they located there, what's good or bad about them. Equally, you could do the same about any local business or industrial parks. These are what services and shops are and about how geographers look at them. You could do a survey, either by visiting your local shopping area to discover what types of shops there are there and making a tally chart of what you find. Or you could use a map to measure the distance to your nearest service. You could display all of these findings on a map, but remember to comment on your findings. Challenge seekers could interview local friends and family about their local services. This is important for section 4 on the tick list. You could ask three or four questions like this and display your results in a table. You could also make a graph but remember to comment on your findings. Okay. To finish off, what human features are you going to investigate and how are you going to do it? These are the human features we're going to be look, you've looked at and you're going to be putting into your project and this is some of the ideas about how you could do it. You can use primary and secondary data. These data collections involve interviews, traffic counts, newspapers, websites, etc. etc. You can put the results into a table. You can turn the table and the results into a graph. Remember always to comment on what you, are, what you have found out and that geographers look for patterns. Good luck and make sure you look at the other podcasts. <laughs>